So what are some of the, you know, there's lots of games on, on the site. I saw right. how many games do you guys have currently? We have 20, 20 and 17 of them are focused on math. And then three of them are kind of marketed separately because they were done for a specific project for kids whose parents are in treatment. And so those three are under the Strong Mind, Strong Body Foundation. And they're looking at things like making a safety plan, um, domestic violence, and getting information from students on like depression scores, adverse childhood events. So huh. they're more for people working in therapeutic settings. At so, risk kids. Yeah. So we have three of those and then we have 17 that are focused specifically on math and social studies. And every one of those has either a focus on Latino history or Native American history. And we don't go into communities and say, have us make something for you mm. as far as the indigenous communities. Now we might go to a corporation and we've done that and say, hey, you do these great books that you used to teach in school. We can make a game for you. So we'll do it to a corporation. But I feel like for a lot of indigenous communities, they've had enough of people helicoptering in to help. So everything we do that's in Lakota, Dakota, Wasco, um, Navajo, we've had people from that community come to us and say, we would like you to make a game. That's, that's how you got involved. That's why there's 17, 17 games right. with uh, American Indians and right. Latino. And, then, and, and the interesting one about some of the Latino ones is I, it started out, I had a teacher in Missouri say to me, you know, I have children that come into my classroom every year and they don't speak English. They only speak Spanish. Their parents are farm workers or whatever. And I don't speak Spanish. I'm in a town of 6,000 people. We have no bilingual curriculum. You know, I went to, I forget, Missouri Baptist College or somewhere, you know, and came home and married a farmer. I have no experience in bilingual ed. I don't speak Spanish. No one in my district speaks Spanish. And I tell the children, you know, well, just sit here and watch what the other kids are doing. And she said, I know I'm not doing right by those children. Is there anything you could do? So that's how we started our bilingual games because, you know, we all, most of us in our company speak Spanish. So we have voiceovers and the student could click a button and it will switch the text and the voiceover to Spanish. Because a lot of kids who, well, you grew up in New Mexico, you probably know this. A lot of kids, maybe they hear Spanish at home, like, but like me, I never had any education in it, right? So the first time I was talking to my friend years ago, and I said, what is this word? And she said, that's Spanish. I said, I've been hearing Spanish my whole life, and I never heard the word hija. And she goes, it's hija. But, you know, I never learned that in school. Pronounce it, yeah. Right. So we started making games that you could click and switch everything from English to Spanish. But the teacher can that doesn't speak or read Spanish, they can see in English, this is what the student's learning. And... Yeah, so that's how we got started on it. Mm. It's a lot of, uh, how's the AI, you guys have AI? Like, um... in, in some sense, and it's pretty fun. So, for example, I now I spent a lot of time with math, teaching math, and so mm. on. So you see the kind of problem, the errors that students would make. So, for example, in Spirit Like the Game, you're chased up a tree by rabid wolves. And a math problem pops up and says... You know, Hokushinato is just a boy. He can't hit a wolf every time. You know, he takes, you know, about one out of five arrows hits a wolf. Mm. And there's seven wolves. How many arrows do you need? And so the correct answer, of course, is 35. But if they put 12, then the program pops up and says, that is incorrect. Did you maybe add instead of multiply? And it's so funny to watch. Because like, I did. How did it know that? <laughs> so we do try to... I mean, obviously, if you put 4,082, um, we don't have anything. But we do have programmed in the, the common types of errors students would make for a problem and then explaining not just that it was wrong, but what the error was they made. Uh -huh. um, how do you, like, how do, how do you, um, you know, it's a lot of money, right, to the programming and programmers, right? Do you have program all over the world or? Like no, we everything we do is done right here in the United States, okay. and we are very proud of that. We have we actually have one person in Chile because um, Startup Chile funded us. Mm. Um, we did have a couple of people there that were funded by the because you know, we had fund money from the Chilean government to open an office there. But no, when it started, my husband and I were the two software developers, and we wrote every line of code in there. And now we've got um, three others, so okay. we write it all. And yes. It costs a lot of money to make a good game, and that's why so many games out there suck. And for us, the first couple of years, 
we, me, Maria, and Dennis, the three co-founders, all worked for no money and just lived off our savings. And then we started making enough money that we could pay ourselves some. And so it went from making no money and putting money in. To probably when you start up, it's the same way. To not having to put money in, but not making any money, to making a little bit of money and being able to hire people. And mm. so we've been been growing. And, uh, you know, what are, what are some of your... What would you like to see, like the growth? Like, what would you like to see happen with 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 these games and with Seven Generation? The thing that we're doing right now that's super cool is because we made all these games. We're continuing to make games, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. for anybody that wants to pay us to do them. Uh, well, I mean, we're not doing porn, but <laughs> we have some limits. But the other thing we've been doing that's super super cool is building a platform so pe so it's way easier to make games. So we can make them, and this is obviously proprietary and, and copyright and all that. We can make them much faster and mm -hmm. cheaper than other people because over the years, think about, uh, do, do you ever do a blog or anything like that? I have some. Yeah. Okay. So if you think about like WordPress, something like that, how easy it is to do a blog. Mm -hmm. Well, back when it first started, if you were going to do a blog, you had to code in HTML, you had to code in CSS, you had to create your own database, you had no PHP, you had no SQL. And now you could just log in and make a blog. Mm. So that's what we've got with these blocks that we've been making that makes it that much easier to make games. And so what we're doing is on two fronts, we're making more and more uh, customized games. We've got one coming out in a couple of weeks. We've got a couple more just waiting for the client to sign off on them. And at the same time, we're building these blocks that we're going to license to other people. So mm. other people can make really good educational games. Because I don't think I have a monopoly on all the good ideas in the world. Mm -hmm. So allowing others to use your system, your, uh, what's the word, um, your platform, your, your, the structure that you, you right, guys have built right. over the years. And so then we're looking at probably in the next few weeks of doing community round. 